Hey everybody, welcome back for some more One Direction. This one comes from Pat. Uh, so thank you, Pat, for requesting this. Uh, Pat says, since we watched the 1D Historian video recently, I uh, didn't seem to mind it. They Pat thought we'd watch another one. For the April request, thought we'd enjoy Five Seconds of Summer. What? Yes, I think, well, I think, remember Five Seconds of Summer toured with One Direction, so this might be that history part of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's the... How so they relate they, to One Direction? I get. Gotcha. I don't know. We haven't watched the video, so it's the same gal that did the uh, Zane breakdown, and mm. it's funny. Uh, people are already like, because <laughs> uh, you know we we posted that we did it, but we haven't put it on YouTube yet at the time of this recording. But yeah. people in the comments are like, "No, she failed to mention that Zane." <laughs> 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 and I'm like. Okay, I, I, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you guys a little secret here. Let me tell you a little secret here. <laughs> okay, I, and I'm gonna tell you a secret here for all you commenters on YouTube. This is gonna be so funny. When I see anything past this length <laughs> on the comment section, me stop reading. <laughs> so when these people write these like history notes of whatever, whatever the video, whatever the video. I'm like, just say that Nathan and I... Put this way, and the other secret is, if you don't say that you liked our reaction, you don't get the heart from us. It's only the people... <laughs> if you say, hey, I enjoyed your reaction, and I have this to say about the video, I just need to see somewhere in there, enjoyed the reaction, cool. We like you. <laughs> because mm -hmm. anyone can just go on Wikipedia and go, blah, 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 blah. That's fine. That's not what... You, know, you get the point. Yeah. 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 Yeah, she was good. This uh, One Direction gal was just fine. I think she was totally, mm -hmm. totally capable and fine. She has a good presentation and she knows what she's talking about. I thought so. Yeah. Here she is. I think we're going to hear. I guess the history. I didn't of find her. Box. Sorry, I didn't find her annoying. We found no, some some of the the like super fans just a little annoying on the annoying side. She didn't seem that annoying. Yeah, she seemed like she's. Well, she's yeah. pretty. She's pretty. Uh, pretty good. Yeah. All right. Lana, welcome back. This is Wendy Historian, and today we are talking about One Direction and Five Seconds of Summer. If you're a Directioner, odds are you have heard of the band Five Seconds of Summer, or at least have seen the acronym 5SOS or 5 Sauce. I am so Yeah, we love them. We love them. We saw yeah. them in concert a year ago. We've seen, they're fantastic. We've seen them live. Yeah, I was just yeah. going to say, yeah. We love them. Sorry, I still have no idea how your fandom pronounces it. In fact, there's a It's 5 Sauce, and we like to mix our sauce with 5 Sauce. There you go. <laughs> A ton of crossover between the two fandoms. And these crossover fans, who sometimes refer to themselves as OT9s, got the Easter egg of a lifetime when Five Seconds of Summer's old me music video premiered in 2020. And the Five Seconds of Summer guys ran into some familiarly dressed men. But what's at the root of this English love affair? Or English-Irish love affair? English-Irish-Australian love affair? They're Australian, yes. <laughs> I'm surprised she doesn't know them, being the One Direction historian the way she is. I not like no. every fan. Not that every One Direction fan would be a fan of the bands that open for One Direction, but I just find it. I thought there was a big Venn diagram. I thought the Venn diagram was pretty strong between the the two bands. I well, she, she threw the Irish in there because it's Nile One Direction, right? Yeah, no, but she didn't mention Australia. I think she mentioned it later, like okay. she oh in Australia. I, I could be reading too much to, but it doesn't sound like she's familiar with it because she says I don't know how to pronounce it. Mm. The five sauce oh. acronym. Yeah. Oh, I see. Romance. In 2011, four Australian friends started a band and began uploading covers of popular songs to YouTube. They blew up almost right away, in large part because as young as they were, it was clear that they were immensely talented. And undeniably yep. in small part because they were cute. And in 2012, this they released hurt. a cover mashup mm -hmm. of One Direction's What Makes You Beautiful and One Thing and attracted the attention of Directioners. Directioners have always okay. viciously gatekept One Direction's music. Ordinarily, when someone attempted to cover One D songs, Directioners would immediately blast them with hate, accusing them of being untalented and using 1D for attention and on and on and on and on. Very curiously. And those are the type of One Direction fans I hate when they comment on our channel. Like, mm -hmm. Five Sauce is smart. That's a smart thing to do. Every band who's starting off always covers bands that are bigger than That's how covers work. Usually it's mm -hmm. the Stones covered bands, the Beatles covered artists, the Beatles covered artists to oh, help. Yeah. Like it's yeah. a it's the age old tradition of you cover the artist before you so people can again see how you sound and like okay I like how, I like what they did here I want to hear their other stuff that's how covers work it's a, it's yeah. it's a foolproof plan to get in new listeners and it worked for Five Sauce so good for them. Mm -hmm. Directioners 
actually loved Five Seconds of Summer's mashup cover. It was acoustic, but with a slightly emo, edgy flair, yeah, very creative percussion, is. and on-point harmonies. And as we so often did with things that we liked and wanted the boys to notice, we started tweeting the link at them, tagging them in it. Much to our chagrin, there was never any acknowledgement. Or so we thought. Five Seconds of Summer's popularity during this time started growing at an exponential rate, and a lot of us were Directioners whose attention they had caught with a One Direction cover, but had kept with their own brand of charm yep, and talent. Good. Now, not mm -hmm. all Directioners were on board. A lot of them were sticking with the usual, they're just using 1D for attention, and they're untalented, and blah blah blah, but it wasn't the majority that it normally would have been. And then in November of 2012, they once again publicly crossed paths with Directioners when Louis Tomlinson tweeted out a link to an acoustic version of their song gotta get out saying that he had been a fan of the band for a while cool there you go let's mm. read that and if mm. oh sorry she's so fast with her gotta get out saying that he had been a fan of the band for a while they yeah, look like young they are here nathan oh that yeah <laughs> <laughs> look at luke luke, <laughs> luke luke looks like he's 12 yeah That's hilarious <laughs> Oh boy. And a few weeks later, when they released their first single, Out of My Limit, Niall Horan retweeted a link to the music video. Oh, good for them. That's cool. Good for them. That's and a at the huge, start of 2013. That's mm -hmm. a huge plug for Five. So that's huge when you have One Direction with their big, massive following retweeting your stuff. Oh, yeah. I would love it if one of them retweeted our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> It was announced that Five Seconds of Summer would be the opening act on One Direction's Take Me Home tour in the UK, US, Australia, and New Zealand. Very now, being cool. One Direction's opening act, as well as an act that One Direction seemed to be fans of and also personal friends with, meant that the Directioner fandom's eyes were on Five Seconds of Summer. Directioners have always gone out of our way to adopt the things that 1D loves, as well as attempt to get close with their family and friends. It's problematic from a privacy perspective. But Five Seconds of Summer was in the public eye themselves, and so it felt totally Totally safe and okay for Directioners to devour them and prove our love for 1D by mirroring 1D's love for Five Seconds of Summer. Harry affectionately referred to them as the emos. All nine boys posted pictures and videos of each other on social media as well as interacting constantly. And there were plenty of onstage shenanigans as well. Yeah, we saw that. Yeah. Yeah. They played their own headlining tour around Australia and it sold out like instantly. Then in 2014, after the release of their mega hit single, She Looks So Perfect, <laughs> Five Seconds of Summer announced that they would once again be the opening act on One Direction's Where We Are tour. This was extremely surprising because since opening for them the year before, Five Seconds of Summer had amounted a quite frankly wild amount of fame. But mostly fans didn't question it because we were just excited to see both bands live together again. Now around this time in online spaces and especially at shows, we started witnessing a stunning phenomenon. Older fans began to shift away from the Directioner fandom and lean into the Five Seconds of Summer fandom. The more popular One Direction became, the less popular it became to admit that you liked One Direction. Obviously, this was not the case in all spaces. But among veteran... What was that? What was that way of thinking again? Sorry. You have to go back a second or two. Her, I'm distracted because her mic changed over. Because <laughs> it's not working anymore. And, like, so now it's just through the camera. And, I, and I, so in my head, I just went into, like... Why isn't her mic working anymore? How come it stopped working? And I completely stopped paying attention to what she was saying. <laughs> yeah, it's she has some good information, but she needs to work on. I, I've noticed that the, mm. there needs to be a better mic quality mm. with her videos. But um, mm -hmm. okay, she was just basically saying. Well, let me, I'll go back ten seconds. I think she was saying that as One Direction. Funny enough, got more popular. It was not as popular to like them. I think it's like the Nickelback effect. Of yeah, yeah. And um, the more popular One Direction became, the less popular it became to admit that you liked One Direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. but that that's that's the case with almost. The, I call it the Nickelback effect. Like they they get popular, but you're not ever admitting. So, like someone's going to the shows. Yeah, I love how everyone hates Nickelback. And I'm mm -hmm. not a fan of them. I don't care about them. But what I mean by that effect is like, but 
but someone's going to the show. Somebody's buying the music. Like, but who's the fans? Nobody's a fan. Nobody's a fan. But they're not filling. Yeah. They're, you know, the seats are being filled up at these shows. Yeah, okay. Obviously, this was not the case in all spaces, but among veteran fans, and especially those of us who were upper high school, college, university age, oh, there was age, yeah. starting to be a struggle with the public perception that One Direction was an untalented boy band for kids, teeny bopper, bubblegum pop. For those fans who were... And we were one of those groups of people before our mm -hmm. journey. I didn't know anything about them, and it's, it's, it's easy to think that when you don't know them as a band, we don't know their music. And so I don't, I don't begrudge... If someone says that to me now, I'll be like, yeah, I get it. I, I understand because I was there. So I get where you are. I understand. But I've enjoyed and you've enjoyed, of course, the journey to get to know those boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're starting to be publicly shamed or embarrassed about liking One Direction. Five Seconds of Summer offered an alternative. They had boy band appeal with rock music legitimacy. Well, I went to seven shows on the Where We Are tour, and I wow. can't even begin to describe the nonsense of how many fans showed up wearing nothing but Five Seconds of Summer merch, and they'd show up claiming like, um, yeah, I'm just here for Five Seconds of Summer, actually. Uh -huh. I've been a fan of theirs since the beginning, and like, Juan Direction? What even is that? Is that a band? I never uh -huh. heard of them. But then guess who would be screaming and singing right. every single word during One Direction set? Nice try. The whole thing mm. was so silly. Then that summer, strange news broke. One Direction and Five Seconds of Summer were both Sony bands, were both signed to Modest Management, had toured together. They were close, but no one had any idea just how close until Billboard published an expose explaining that One Direction partly owned Five Seconds of Summer. One what? Really? That's okay. news to us. Interesting. Like the band itself. So uh, let me speculate then, Nathan, before we could finish the video here. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So let me ask this question. So when Louis and Niall retweeted this stuff, was it done because they legitimately on their own like the band? Or was mm. this a little bit of the company being like, you might want to retweet this. I think this will be good for both parties. Like, did they legitimately, mm. honestly, on their own, without any outside influence or introductions, find five seconds of sauce on their own? Mm -hmm. I don't five know if you can answer. Sauce. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they should change it to that. Five <laughs> seconds of saucing on people. <laughs> I'll sauce on you for five seconds. <laughs> Anyways, you get what I'm saying, though? <laughs> yes, I get it. So, yeah. yeah let's see. What, yeah. Maybe she answers it. But that's what she's telling us right now, that because mm -hmm. they're... I, look, look, it's a business. I'm not begrudging the business, but there's a little part of me like, oh, I thought it was a legitimate we found them on our own and want to promote them thing. Now there might be... Mm -hmm. you know, there's a monetary reason, too, as well, to promote the band. Direction mm -hmm. as a collective owned approximately 23% of the stock share of Five Seconds of Summer. In the simplest Ooh. terms possible, for every dollar Five Seconds of Summer made, One Direction made 23 cents. There was a lot of uproar about this. The oh, yeah. so this is real. Uh, kind of, I'm not mad at anyone. I'm just kind of sad that the relationship was uh, more of a, a transactional. Yeah, so yes. basically, let's just say this. One Direction is like, hey, we're going to promote you guys. You guys will get bigger because of that biggerness, so to speak. We'll get money from that. But then you guys, too, would get more money than you would have gotten had we not got our promoted from us because you're getting that bump from us, too. So both parties make money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is disappointing. The general public was split as to whether it was shady for One Direction to ask their fans to financially support a band that they were profiting off of, or whether that was just good business sense. And fans were split over whether it was fair for 1D, who was already making all of the money on Earth, to take money from an up-and-coming band, or whether One Direction was fairly owed that money for discovering Five Seconds of Summer and giving them a platform. See, she did this. She did discover. She mm -hmm. went like this when she said the words discover. So yep. she's saying what we're saying. It wasn't a real discovery. It was a profitable one. For, well, it, look, 
Yeah, okay, we'll let her finish. We'll give her closing thoughts. After all, industry mm-hmm. rumors have swirled for years that Louis Tomlinson was actually pushing for this band behind the scenes the entire time, helping them make relationships with record executives and with other artists because he was so impressed by their One Direction cover. At least as of 2015, both Louis and Liam have formally resigned their shares in Five Seconds of Summer. And Thank though they you. may have gotten their start with 1D, Five Seconds of Summer has very impressively outlasted 1D, as they are yep. still active over a decade later, yep. rolling out incredible song after incredible song. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so I think, again, I, I'm not begrudging it. It's just a little... The natural discovery of Five Sauce as we saw it with the band, that's what we understood to be. It's a little disheartening. Like, oh, it's not as romantic as we thought. So it was a business venture. There's nothing wrong with business. There's nothing wrong with nepotism. That's just the way life works. I know someone. You know somebody. Let me help you out. Let me give you a handout. Let me help you. To say that doesn't exist. Nepotism isn't bad. It's just like, it's just... Oh, it's just connections. People you know. Sometimes you know the right people. Right time, right well, place, right people. it's less organic is what it is. It's less organic. That's, that's right. It's yeah. less organic. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I wonder something because I, I don't know if she really gave all the details. So I'm wondering about this particular detail. Okay. Like you said, is it the case that Louis gen- genuinely found them and then purchased, like not that Louis would have done it, but maybe their companies merch like i'm curious to know is is there a timeline of that and is that Mm. timeline known because it might be there's a chance it might be just they found them and then they bought shares and there's their stuff and then they took off almost like like they promoted them and said hey we'll make you a deal we'll promote you even more as long as we can have part ownership in the company and I mean, I don't mean the boys at One Direction. I'm guaranteeing it would be the execs and the people that you know own sure. the rights and blah blah blah. And and I'm guessing that's that's probably more likely what happened, rather than it being a like, you know, we're gonna like make your band basically, right? We're gonna like, we're gonna like promote you on the side. You'll be big as long as we can like kind of create your band or have part, you know, part of the deal in making it. Yeah. Mm. All right. Interesting. Great stuff. Thanks, One Direction historian. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you. It's great to see you again. Looking lovely as always. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody else who joined us. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on a future reaction.